Even if you've never heard of a carbon steel skillet, you've almost certainly eaten food made in one. Restaurant chefs use carbon steel for everything from searing steak to sauteing onions to cooking eggs. French omelet and crepe pans are made of carbon steel, and so are Chinese woks. In European home kitchens, these pans are hugely popular, but somehow they've never really caught on with home cooks in the United States. But these pans have a reputation for being as great at browning as they are for keeping delicate foods from sticking. So we knew it was time to check them out. We bought eight carbon steel skillets, all as close as possible to 12 inches, which is our preferred size for a primary skillet. Carbon steel pans are surprisingly inexpensive. Most of these cost just $40 to $80. But out of curiosity, we also included a $230 hand-forged pan made in Seattle. Now we tried our carbon steel pans with a wide variety of recipes because they're supposed to be able to do it all. We fried eggs, we made cheese omelets, we pan seared steak, and we even made the traditional French upside down apple dessert called tarte tatin. This dessert begins on the stove with caramelizing apples and then moves to the oven to bake up the crust. Then you have to flip out this sticky, delicate dessert. Now because these pans are made entirely of metal, they have no upper limits on their oven safe temperatures. So you can use them in the oven anytime. Along the way, as always when we're testing skillets, we checked out their shape, their weight, their handle comfort, and how maneuverable they felt for a variety of testers. We washed the pans after every use to let us judge how easy they were to clean and maintain. But speaking of maintenance, the very first thing we learned about carbon steel is that like cast iron, it rusts if the metal is bare. New pans have to be seasoned before you can start cooking. Seasoning just means bonding oil to the pan, which provides a layer of rust protection, but also starts the process of making the pan non-stick. This probably sounds a little more complicated than it actually was. In fact, two of our eight pans arrived pre-seasoned, but the other six needed us to get them started. Now first you need to scrub off the shipping grease or wax that the manufacturers coat the pans with so they won't rust before you get them home. And then we followed each brand's recommendations for seasoning the pans. In the end, we found one simple method that our winner used. You just cook the peels of two potatoes in a ton of oil and salt. That's actually a third cup of oil and two thirds cups of salt for about eight to 10 minutes until they're nice and brown and crispy. And you move the peels around the pan to coat it well. And then you throw those peels out. You wipe out and rinse the pan, you dry it, and you're good to go. The peels seem to help soak up any remaining shipping grease or wax while the hot oil seasons the metal. Now most of the pans, once we'd seasoned them, were amazingly nonstick after one round of seasoning. We saw fried eggs sliding around like a puck in air hockey. Omelets rolling out in perfect golden oblongs, zero sticking. Tarts popped right out with very few exceptions, looking glossy and intact. And each time we cooked, more patina built up as the hot oil polymerized and bonded to the surface of the pans. The shiny silver surfaces of the new pans got more brown and blotchy, and that's a good thing. It means your pan is getting seasoned. Over a couple of months of cooking, the pan will keep darkening and getting more nonstick till it's almost solidly black or dark brown, and that's what you're working towards. Now, as a result, you never want to scrub with an abrasive or use soap on these pans, just like cast iron pans. Most of the time, we weren't even tempted to scrub because nothing stuck. We could practically just wipe them out with a paper towel after we were cooking. Otherwise, hot water, a gentle swish with a soft sponge, rinse, dry well with the towel and the stove's heat, and oil it lightly. That's all you need to do. Now, another benefit of carbon steel skillets, searing steaks and browning foods. A smoking hot traditional skillet does a perfectly acceptable job, and a cast iron skillet is brilliant at browning and searing, but, but we found the carbon steel pans trumped both of them. And we got impressively deep, even browning in the best carbon steel pans, easily on a par with cast iron. But carbon steel pans have another bonus. They're lighter and thinner, so they heat up in almost half the time as cast iron, and they're easier to lift and handle. The only drawback we could find was when we made skillet lasagna. The long simmering tomato sauce stripped off our seasoning, but we didn't notice any off flavors in the food, and the patina came right back after a couple of rounds of heating and wiping the pan with oil on the stovetop. A quick, short use of an acidic ingredient like a tomato-based pan sauce had no effect on the seasoning. Now finally, design features helped us single out our favorites. Some of these pans felt unbalanced or had slightly cramped cooking surfaces. Other ones had too high sides that made it awkward to get under food with a spatula or so low that liquids kind of threatened to splash out. And several had unusually long, steeply angled handles that were a little bit awkward for shorter testers. And they barely fit in the oven when we made tart to 10. 
Now, at the end of the testing, we knew carbon steel skillets had earned a place in our kitchen. And we had two top choices. First, the Matra Borgia black steel round frying pan. It's just $44. This is a simple, classic pan that cooks beautifully. It's sturdy, it's easy to handle, smooth, and the inside is rivet free so it doesn't trap any bits of food. If you have the money, the hand forged pan is a stunner. It comes pre-seasoned and it performed perfectly. It's called the Blue Skillet Ironware 13-inch fry pan for $230.